Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special, very special edition of the Law of Self-Defense show. I am, of course, let me take care of, I've got to, wait, I've got to echo here someplace. Oh, good heavens. Nothing but the most professional, professional work here. So, well, welcome to the Law of Self-Defense show. I am, of course, attorney Andrew Branca. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but I, I am not the star of the show today. We have a very special guest with us today, my good friend and wonderful actor who we all admire tremendously, Adam Baldwin. Here he is. Hey, hey buddy. How you doing? And good morning. For good morning. Starting the good, show Sunday, good Sunday morning. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful out here in sunny Colorado, for sure. I know it must be. It's always gorgeous in L.A., right? Um, Today's a beautiful day. It's a golf day. So... For some reason, I'm getting an echo here. Let me let me close some stuff down and uh, usually that. Uh oh. Okay. Just turn your turn your volume down, maybe. I don't usually get this, so it's a little okay. off putting. What am I doing wrong? Okay, well, I may have fixed it. All right, you can still hear me okay? Oh, yeah. All right, well, I can still hear that darn echo. All right, you can still hear me okay? Yeah. All right, I'm going to... You want to restart the show? Um... <laughs> Wait. No, I never do that. We're not that professional, Adam. Okay. We're just looking for clips anyway. <laughs> All right. So, it's a, it's uh, we're a clip nation. I think, that, I think that got rid of it. So we're here today, of course, to talk about this whole uh, – well, this is a little bit – there we go – about this whole Alec Baldwin affair, uh, the rust set, the shooting death of Helena Hutchins, uh, the uh, shooting injury to Joel Souza, and – the potential criminal liability that Alec Baldwin is facing. And I've touched a lot on this from the strictly uh, legal perspective, New Mexico law on involuntary manslaughter. It seems a pretty open and shut case. But what I don't have any expertise in is standards and practices on movie sets, SAG, after what their rules might be. And one of the biggest excuses I've heard on behalf of Alec Baldwin is that, well, sure, maybe what he did would normally be involuntary manslaughter, but the rules are different if you're an actor on a set. And first of all, that can't be the case because procedures on a set cannot preempt state law, especially criminal law. And the criminal law here is pretty straightforward, folks. Involuntary manslaughter, in fact, I can, I can pull it up because I've written about this extensively already. Uh, let me pull up the previous thing I've done here. So I can show everyone the actual statute maybe well i can't i'll have to pull that up separately i closed it because of the echo but under we have we have it memorized by now we know it we know it by heart by now yeah it's committing it's committing an unjustified death uh committing a lawful act but without due care and circumspection in other words in a dangerous way when you're handling a gun it's an inherently dangerous instrument we all know this we're all presumed by the law to know this if you point a gun at another human being and you don't first ensure that it's unloaded you're cr knowingly creating a risk that that person could be killed no none of us would point a gun to our own head without making sure it wasn't loaded i bet you alec baldwin would not have pointed that gun in his head if that's what the script had called for without personally ensuring there was not a round in that gun so you know you're creating a risk of death you do it anyway and that's the legal definition of reckless conduct creating an unjustified risk of death to another person knowingly and ignoring the risk and the death results that's what happened here. It's an open sh and shut case of involuntary manslaughter under New Mexico law, except the Alec Baldwin crowd and whatever crisis management team he's, uh, he's uh, hired to create all these bots on Twitter and elsewhere, uh, keep screaming, well, th that may be the law for normal people, but if you're an actor, it's different. And I 
asked Adam to come on so he could talk to us about his experience with all of this. And he was kind enough to send me the um, this document. Let's see if I can pull it up. He's got it right there. And yes, yeah, so it's a SAG after safety. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I go. found it. All right. So it's this document here. It's the SAG after uh, safety bulletin. So these are rules for, and by the way, when I read through this document, I was like, holy crap, you guys do a lot of dangerous things in movies. I mean, it's got skydiving, fire, uh, speed roping, all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, but of course, these are all dangerous activities. You have to have safety guidelines around them uh, if we don't want people to be unnecessarily injured. And a large section of this covers the handling of firearms. In the general scope of safety, this document is unbelievably clear that safety is effectively everybody's responsibility on the set. In fact, in the first couple of pages, it sets right out. As an actor, you are ultimately responsible for your own safety and the safety of your fellow cast members. Everybody's responsible for safety. Safety is everybody's job. Nobody gets a free ride. Is that right, Adam? That's right. All industry personnel have legal and moral responsibility for safety on the set or wherever they may be working. There's no excuse. It's, uh, I mean, this is going to be a really short show. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think one of the points that, that brought this up again is he's suing, Alec is suing some uh, crew members in, in a way, uh, I guess, to uh, deflect blame from himself to uh, others when ultimately it's his resp his responsibility. The weapon is is in his hand. It's his responsibility for where it points and for keeping his finger off the trigger. And why the heck were, were there even dummy rounds in, in the weapon during a rehearsal? It says clearly in the safety bulletin that that firearm, all firearms used in rehearsal should be empty. And they're all, all presumed to be loaded, just like any other gun. I mean, that's when you're handling the gun, you presume that it's lo a loaded gun. You handle it as if there were live ammo in it. Yes, and and that particular weapon, that uh, that Colt forty five uh, re um, replica, it, it's easy to check. You just swing open the loading gate and click, 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 and you're done. Yep. And you can see, you can eyeball through the loading gate whether there is an intact primer on that uh, <clears throat> dummy round, if there's a dummy round in there, or if it's a live round. And anybody that is familiar with uh, firearms, which Alex certainly is and has been for many, many years, he would see, oh, that's an intact primer because dummy rounds either have the primer completely removed or there's a, an indentation where it's been expended already. Yeah, it's already been expended, striked. Um, and so he, he could easily eyeball that once that was handed to him. Declared safe. OK, well, let me just double check and make sure. Click, 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 click. Takes less than five seconds. Right. And you can't just dump the responsibility off on someone else and say someone told you the gun was safe. We would never do that in any other area of our lives. We we wouldn't let someone put a blindfold on us and put us behind the wheel of a car and say, yeah, just step on the gas. Don't worry about what's going to happen. We'd be responsible if we ran some, somebody over in front of us. In fact, the second paragraph here um, says that you have the right to say no to any stunt or scene you think might be dangerous. Adam... Uh, Alec can't say, well, I did it because the director told me to do it or the cin cinematographer told me to do something dangerous. Therefore, it's acceptable for me to do something dangerous. The danger, the life at stake, because that's the balance here, folks. Uh, Adam just talked about how easy it is to check the revolver. And people have said, well, you know, it's, it's, it takes time. It would be time consuming. It would be inconvenient. First of all, it's not. But however inconvenient it might be, the, on the other side of the scale is a human life, the life of a woman and mother. You know you're pointing that muzzle directly at, and the law does not value the convenience of the actor or even the whole production more than it values that human life on the other end of that muzzle. Right. So what does it really? What does this whole thing really come down to, Andrew? It comes down to a, uh, as you've said before on your on your show, uh, a political decision from the Santa Fe prosecutor. Does the, does the prosecutor believe that there's a strong case there? I don't see how there isn't for involuntary manslaughter, at least. Uh, how could you not get a conviction when the law was clearly violated? All the other, um, what, do you, what do you call them, preceding violations, why, was, why were there live rounds on set? Why, right. was, why was it handed to them and declared safe? 
those may be separate issues, but ultimately the main <clears throat> crime falls to Alex actions and everything else uh, leading up to that is, is a secondary offense. Yeah. So there are a couple things there. It's quite possible that lots of people bear liability for what happened here. I mean, lots sure. of people could have done things wrong that, that helped create risk here. Uh, right. There shouldn't have been live ammo on the set. Uh, you know, the, the guns should have been managed more carefully. I don't know. Uh, but the last link in the chain is Alec Baldwin. He's the one who knowingly point, he knew it was a real gun. So I could imagine a scenario where imagine he'd been told, Hey, this is an inert object. It's not capable of firing weapons. And he believed that to be true. And then the gun went off. Well, if he believed he was holding an inert object, then he was not knowingly creating reckless danger to someone downrange. But he, he did. He knew it was a gun. He knew yes. it was a real gun that could fire real bullets, that would fire a real bullet, unless he made sure there was no live ammo in it. In fact, his conduct arguably relieves everybody else of liability because there's there's a, a legal concept called a, a superseding cause, meaning you might have done some bad things that you would be normally held responsible for, but if the reason the ultimate harm resulted was because of some later event and no harm would have resulted but for that later event, you're relieved of liability. And that's, that's Alec Baldwin. Uh, they could have done everything wrong. They could have had live ammo on sets, a live round in the gun, mismanagement of the weapon, all that kind of stuff. And if he had not pointed that muzzle at Helena Hutchins, she'd still be alive. That's right. And if he had not cocked the weapon and dropped the hammer, uh, which I guess forensics, uh, FBI forensics have, have proven that the, the weapon was not uh, malfunctioning in any way or uh, had a faulty safety mechanism. Therefore, the only way that that particular weapons hammer can drop is if you depress the trigger, which he clearly did. He may have done it inadvertently. I don't believe, I don't think anyone thinks he did it on purpose, but that doesn't relieve him of responsibility for his negligence. It's a negligent discharge. If if there's a negligent discharge on, on shows that I've been on, that person is fired. Yeah. Yep. And and frankly, to my mind, it doesn't even really matter if he pulled the trigger or not, because he, he could have pulled the trigger, and if the muzzle had been one inch over to the left or the right of Helena Hutchins, she'd still be alive. Uh, if True. he bothered to check to make sure, so he, you mentioned the cross complaint he just filed against some of the, uh, some of the other people suing him. He's suing them back now, essentially saying they caused him harm. Um, and part of, and I went over that in great detail in my show yesterday. And part of his complaint includes uh, still photographs of other actors on the set pointing guns at each other with their finger on the trigger and saying, see, everyone else was doing it. That must be, it was, everyone thought it was safe to do that. Well, maybe those people, first of all, maybe they checked to make sure their gun wasn't loaded. I still wouldn't advise doing that, but at least you know, if the gun in your hand, you check it, it's still in your hand. You know, there's no bullets in there. It can't fire a bullet that doesn't exist. Maybe they checked, but even if they didn't check, even if they were also being reckless, no actual harm resulted. The, the other actor in that case was not shot. And if the other actor had been shot, I'd be making the same argument about them. It's open and shut involuntary manslaughter. But the fact that someone else may have gotten away with bad conduct and did, did not get a bad result doesn't mean it was okay for Alec to do it and Helena Hutchins to die as a result. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I consider myself very well trained with firearms. I'm by no means a master, but I think I'm pretty expert in the fan handling of firearms. I've been doing it for a long time. And I've taken the time with the prop department and the armorers to learn the, each particular weapon that I'm to be using on any, any given day. Uh, and we're required by the safety bulletin itself, we're, we are required to do training so that we are familiarized. So Alec was familiarized with this weapon. He had fired it before in practice sessions. I don't know whether he was firing it with live rounds or not off. Apparently, I mean, I've been I've been out there to uh, Santa Fe, to the Cook Ranch and other uh, ranches out there. We did Wyatt Earp out there. Uh, it's, it's vast open uh, country and you could easily go off and plink, plink rocks and cans uh, several hundred yards downrange. Uh, that probably is what was happening. And that's why there were live rounds anywhere near these weapons. They were using them for fun or whatever. 
I mean, so is I, that uncommon, Adam, or is that relatively common? Because I've heard it's relatively common on on these kinds of sets for people to get some downtime and they go do some shooting. Of course it is. And you're out in New Mexico, which is an uh, open carry state. It's uh, everyone out there pretty much has, uh, as, as far as I know, it's an open carry state. Uh, but out on the range, it's private property, uh, this shooting ranch uh, where they were filming easily could have been doing that. Now it's against the rules. I don't know if it's against the law and the law supersedes that. And that's, that's, I haven't been able to find where it says it's illegal to shoot uh, downrange of a movie set. Uh, it's, it's against all safety bulletins, but again, the law supersedes the safety bulletin. Right. So I don't know about that one, but there that's, that's to me why there were live live rounds near the, this weapon at all. But it doesn't really matter. It was in the weapon. And right. every, anytime someone hands you a weapon, you presume that there are live rounds in there and you need to check, especially if you're going to be pointing them at anyone you know or are, aren't intending to to kill. In the, in the safety bulletin, it says, to prevent accidents, you need to be aware of your work environment and the equipment being used. Alec was aware of the equipment he had trained with this equipment. He was being cavalier by trusting that it was empty or had dummy rounds in it, which the cylinder should have been empty anyway. Uh, he should have been handed an empty weapon. And you can check that again in less than five seconds. And here I have from the safety bulletin right here up on the screen, 11, section 11, firearms and other weapons, treat all weapons as though they are loaded. Mm -hmm. You treat them as if they were loaded. And of course, obviously, as we know, given Alex's multi-decade career in the industry with lots of movies where he's handling guns, he's got lots of safety briefings, and he knows guns are dangerous. I mean, for God's sakes, he's on the board of a gun control uh, a, a organization that exists because guns are dangerous. Um, not only are we legally presumed to know that guns are dangerous, but he certainly knew it given his his past training and experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, it says anyone that will be using a weapon shall know all the operating features and safety devices of that weapon. Right, not uh, should know. Shall know. <laughs> shall know. Again, not law, but based on law. Law, law says that, so this right. is in... Uh, it, it, it's uh, in continuity with the law itself. The reason I'm so passionate about this entire thing is that I was around uh, when uh, uh, Jason Lee was killed uh, by, a, I guess it was a, a dummy round that was in the barrel and a blank projectile uh, came out and, and killed him. Yeah, there was some obstruction in the barrel that came flying yeah. out, right? And man, many of these uh, protocols were built upon that uh, uh, above and beyond, uh, you know, common sense and state law. <clears throat> so for this to happen is infuriating because I, I pride myself on being a safe operator. And I think that every crew member and other actor is entitled to feel safe on the set when there are firearms involved. And for him to now point the fingers of blame at others while they may be culpable for uh, lesser uh, infractions, crimes, misdemeanors, whatever it may be, he's the one that's ultimately responsible. The actor is the one ultimately responsible because the gun is in his hand. He's the one pointing it. He's the one pulling the trigger. And frankly, I think his cross complaint that he just filed that we covered yesterday gives the game away because repeatedly throughout that 40 or 50 page document, it says there shouldn't have been live rounds in the gun. Well, shouldn't is not can't be. It, 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 it implies that there could be. There shouldn't be, but there could be. So he knows it's a real gun. There could be live rounds in the gun. The only way to be certain there's not a live round in the gun is to check, check yourself before you point that muzzle at another human being. That's what due care and circumspection means in the New Mexico involuntary manslaughter law. If he had done that, there mm -hmm. would be no dead woman. And I've said this before, uh, that the fast reaction public relations uh, campaign against uh, the armorer uh, seemed like it was right out of a James Carville playbook. They dragged, you know, if you drag, you drag, you drag a dollar bill through a trailer, trailer park, you're going you're to catch some whatever, you're going to catch some trash or whatever the hell he said was basically how they treated 
this young armorer when the armorer herself, I believe, was barred from going onto the actual uh, interior of the church where they were filming due to COVID restrictions. Right. They were trying to keep her out uh, as one of the B players, all the A players, you know, the, the director, the actor, the cameraman, the, the script supervisor, they're all in the A tier while they kept the armorer in the B tier. So she wasn't allowed to go in and check it and hand it off. And they were in a hurry after lunch. And uh, this is why this terrible tragedy, this, I believe an accident happened, but an accident can be negligent. And uh, especially when it's with a firearm. And it's, and of course, it's, infu it's infuriating that he's demonizing wonderful crew members that have been working their, their butts off for many, many years uh, because he didn't check the weapon. Alec, why didn't you check the weapon? And there, there's also really a power disparity at play here that I think we don't touch upon enough. And that is, you know, not only was Alec the lead actor on this movie, he's also one of the producers. Everybody on that set, for all practical purposes, was more powerful than this armorer who is what 21 22 years old it was like her first major gig he keeps calling her a professional armorer in his cross complaint but she, she was the most novice naive person on that set and she certainly didn't have the personal authority to challenge anything those much more important people would want to do not if she wants to have another career it's not like she has a 30-year career behind her and she's got the guts to stand up and say hey we can't do this this is dangerous if they're overriding that decision she, she's a kid She's being demonized as an excuse. And Alec being a a named producer on the show is secondary. What's important is that he's the lead actor. He's what got money uh, raised to film this show because of his name. They used his name to raise it. But when you're that guy on the set, the lead actor, you basically run the show. The director doesn't tell you what to do. The director works with you and you collaborate to do things together, but he's not ordering Alec around. The cinematographer isn't ordering her, him around. Oh, you want me to point it here? You want me to point it there? Bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. He has, he's working with them. They're collaborating, but he has the final say and he has the final say with where that weapon is pointed. Well, I mean, you were right at the start, Adam. I'm not sure how much of substance we have to talk about. It's such an open and, and cut case of involuntary manslaughter. The only reason I can imagine that the uh, New Mexico prosecutor hasn't brought criminal charge, I guarantee you, I've worked many of these cases where a couple guys are sitting around after a few drinks at a table, decide to show their guns to each other, and one of them unintentionally shoots the other. And it's involuntary manslaughter every day of the week and twice on Sundays. It's right. just a no-brainer. So what is she waiting for? Is she waiting for his phone i believe she has everything she needs from the fbi what, what whatever more, the reason what, is it's got nothing to do with legal merit so there has to be some other reason but legal merit i assume it's politics i assume uh, they don't want to scare away the movie industry from that area they'd like more productions there if they start prosecuting actors of the of the prestige of uh, alec baldwin it might have a chilling effect um, yeah but they're going yeah but they're they, they're moving rust away from there and they're not going to complete filming of rust there so mm. they're leaving anyway. So what would be the point of not prosecuting them to increase the safety, uh, e even even to increase the safety of future productions? This is this is why it's so maddening. Get it done, please get it done, and uh, let let him know that you, you you just can't get away with this kind of thing. Also, politically, sometimes, you know, we live in a very tribal time in America right now where people are on one team or the other team. And there's a tendency, especially on the left, for them to protect their team, regardless of the consequences, regardless of the truth, go very aggressively after people on the other team, uh, but be very hesitant to go after people on their own team. And that may be part of it, too. The, 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 the prosecutor may share the same political inclinations as uh, Alec. I presume that's the case, given the area, given the state. Um, but we won't know. I mean, we can't know for sure, except I can tell you with absolute confidence based on more than 30 years practicing use of force law that th there's no legal meritorious reason not to bring these criminal charges. Yeah, well, we, so live, in, we, live, in, we live in interesting I, times. I do want to share with everyone because I, I see people asking uh, in the comments um, how we met, how we first met. We've known each other. I, I think it's over a decade now. And uh, how we met really isn't that interesting, but I have a, a story about you I'd like to share 
that because it, it changed my life, that first encounter with you. I was in, I was in California. I was in the LA because I'd been in, invited to um, participate in a debate on Stand Your Ground at UC Berkeley Law School. And I, because I was going to be LA, we, we got together. We were at some pub someplace, having a few beers, probably a few too many beers. And you asked me, well, what's your plan for this debate tomorrow? Especially given that Berkeley is going to be hostile to stand your ground law. Generally, it's going to be a hostile audience. I said, well, I'm going to go in there, fire and brimstone. I'm going to tear those people a new a-hole. Uh, I'm going to rip the place apart. And you just looked at me and you, you could have just been polite, right? You could have just said in your head, well, that's a stupid idea. And then <laughs> we could order another beer, gone out to dinner. But you didn't do that. You did what a friend would do. You told me that's a stupid idea. You told me that's the wrong way to go. You told me it's a college audience. Uh, they don't want to hear fire and brimstone. They want to hear that. Listen, it's a terrible thing that this this was about the Zimmerman Trayvon Martin shooting. That Trayvon Martin was killed in that event. Uh, okay. But bad things happen in life, and this stand your ground law actually makes it easier for everyone to lawfully defend themselves against a criminal attack. Blah 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 blah. Take a much softer approach than I had planned, and I fully expected when I went to Berkeley in that debate that I would get annihilated because the audience would be hostile. And in fact, I took your approach, the much softer approach, not the fire and brimstone approach. And I won that debate. And Sonny Hostin, now in The View, still has not paid me the $100 she wagered on that, <laughs> that deadbeat. So for Wait. 10 years, I've been able to talk about Sonny Hostin. But uh, Adam, you advising me to do that, and I, I can't believe I, I had half a brain to take that advice to very good effect completely changed the way I communicate about the law to people uh, for the rest of my career to this very day. And I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for being such a good friend, even on the very first time uh, that we met. I'm, I'm eternally grateful for it. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And, and I'm glad for all of your success. You're a wonderful attorney. And thank you for writing The Law of Self-Defense. I'm, I'm sure it's helped many, many people. Available uh, for with... free, folks. Available for free right there at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's just, uh, you know, rest in peace, Elena Hutchins. And uh, hopefully uh, there will be some healing in that in that regard. And part of that healing would be some justice, justice served and that these sort of tragedies never happen on movie sets. That's a passion of mine. And uh, someone has to pay the price um, for this negligence. Damn it. <laughs> I love you, man. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I hope I clarified some things. That was great, Adam. Get back to your Sunday. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. OK, four left. <laughs> bye bye. All right, guys, that was it. Adam Baldwin. Uh, what a great guy. What a tremendous friend he's he's always been to me. Uh, <laughs> it's just when well, you meet these people and uh, you just you you, you can't imagine. I, I'll, I'll confess the first time we ever met, I was completely starstruck. I could barely talk. I was just babbling away. Uh, but uh, he's so easy to be around, so pleasant to be around and such a great friend. It's uh, it's just been a tremendous experience. So I'm going to let all of you get back to your Sunday as well. That's all I wanted to cover with all of you today. Get Adam's feedback on this Alec Baldwin situation. And uh, so, as always, remember, folks, if you carry a gun, so you're hard to kill. That's why I carry a gun. So I'm hard to kill, so my family is hard to kill, then you owe it to yourself and your family to also make sure you know the law so you're hard to convict. Until next time, I remain Attorney Andrew Branca for Law of Self-Defense. Stay safe.